maybe we'll cut out all the struggle and then just use this. If you're watching this, you probably are well aware of the a7S III and have watched tons of reviews. I tested the camera and I wanted to throw a bunch of stuff at it and see how it held up. And spoiler alert, it's an amazing camera with a few quirks. Now I highly recommend you watch the vlog adventure thing we did with the a7S III because that's what this review is based on. Now this video wouldn't be possible without the amazing folks at Lauren Lapham Sales and Rentals. I've been renting from them for years now. I've been buying from them, renting from them, everything. And I think one of the reasons why I continue to go back is there's, they're not only a rental house here in Vancouver, they're just a great resource. Like I'll, a lot of times I'll call with a problem. They'll help you come up with a solution and the right gear. So thanks again to the folks at Lauren Lapham for providing the camera and allowing this video to happen. Before we get into it, we gotta address the most important thing, which is what is it that I'm looking for in this camera? What do I want it to do for me? Because that's your starting point. If you and I are looking for different things and we both review the camera, you might say it's terrible and I might say it's amazing and we could both be right because it depends on what you're using it for. For me, I wanted convenience over quality. The key for this was something super convenient, but with as good an image quality as possible. I'll be more specific. One of the main things I wanted for this was to be able to film cars on a very minimal budget. I want no cruise, no nothing, something simple where I can just have this on a small gimbal and it has great autofocus and gives me a great image quality. And second is just something compact that I could use for YouTube, but the quality is good enough to be a B cam to a cinema camera or my Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera, something like that. When you're filming a moving car out of a moving car, then the distance between you and the other car are usually changing quite a bit. And unless you've got like a real badass focus puller, you're gonna need some amazing autofocus if you're shooting in a really tight budget or a tiny little crew. So the autofocus of the A7S III was unbelievable. I would just point the camera at the car and it knew to lock on. Sometimes I needed to just tap and it would track the car perfectly within the frame. It was unbelievable. It was a dream to work with. For the studio stuff, I used quasar tubes like this one on one side of the car. I had a little tiny light on the other side and uh, everything was handheld. The interior shots that looked like they were on a gimbal or a dolly, that was again handheld at 120 frames per second. I wanted to see if it was possible to pull off commercial style footage that would kind of look like an ad uh, for Porsche. And then I also wanted to get some gorilla style documentary footage. I wanted to film at night and see if it held up in low light. I wanted to shoot a moving car that was driving through mountain roads. I wanted to get all of that and see if this camera, this one camera could hold up in all of those scenarios. It's a tall order, but it kept up. Couldn't have done it with any of my other cameras and gotten the same level of image quality. It was a little beast with little quirks. Because you need to overexpose S-Log3 and S-Log2 to some degree to get clean shadows, then you can't really accurately monitor on the LCD. You are only monitoring an overexposed image. Now, if you had an external monitor, that's not an issue because you can upload your own custom LUTs that compensates that overexposure and you're good. It's not a deal breaker, but it is a bit of a bummer. The other issue I have with it is just that internal noise reduction. I think Philip Bloom talked about this as well. One thing I really don't like is there's no way to turn off noise reduction in camera when shooting video. When shooting at high ISOs, it can be really quite aggressive. It can't be turned off and it's pretty aggressive, especially at 12,800 where you're losing a lot of mid-tone detail. And even at the lower ISOs, it just seems like it's always there and it gives it, unfortunately, a bit of a video-y look. Now you can get around it with ProRes RAW, but it means you need to add an external recorder. If this is usable. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like the performance of the camera. It's insane. Oh, no, my performance. Well, your performance is also very, very spectacular. You've really upped it in this segment. <laughs> The word I kept using that day, I think, was workhorse, and that's really what the camera was. It just worked. It just, everything that was wrong with the a7S II is totally has been addressed and then some on this camera. Rolling shutter was terrible. Battery life was terrible. The codec was weak and fell apart so easily. All of those things are not issues anymore. The codec is robust. You've got great dynamic range. Rolling shutter is minimal. The battery life is amazing. The ergonomics are better because you've got a much bigger grip on it now. And even the buttons feel better. It's just a well-executed piece of kit, and I couldn't recommend it more. I think that's it. See you next time.